Lynn? Have you ever felt really small, as if you weren't very important at all? Did people ever say to you, you can't do what you think you can do? Well, if they have, this story is for you. It's a story you may have heard before about a young boy named David and his sling. Dave, and his sling. David kept his father's sheep while his older brothers were away fighting in Israel's army. David was sent by his father to deliver some food to his brothers and see how things were going. He almost forgot why he came when he heard all the noise coming from a big boy on the Philistine mm. side of the battleground. No one was fighting. Everyone was listening to the giant. There isn't one man who would dare to fight me. Not only are you light and scrawny, you're also cowards. What's wrong, Saul? Don't you have anyone who'd be willing to try to fight me? Some army you have, you have, you have there? <laughs> maybe you folks? Maybe, maybe you folks should just go back home to your mamas. <laughs> uh, who is that guy? Who's David? Stand up. Who is that guy? His name is the Goliath. He's been doing this bit all morning. So who's going to fight him? Nobody. Nobody. One of my brothers, you know, Goliath. He's the oldest. Who does this Goliath think he is? Doesn't he know the power of God? He is that stupid. Of <laughs> <laughs> you can sit there and let. The big ox insult us like that. There is a lot. Hey, love, why don't you give it a try? When are you going to? I'm going out there. David, what are you doing here? Dad sent me. What about the sheep? Did did you just leave them out in the field? You just came here to see the battle. Tell Dad you're fine and get on home. <sighs> you little brat. I just asked you a question. <laughs> David was just a kid, but somehow he caught the attention of King Saul. King Saul, what do you want? I don't want anything. I've been listening to that guy's character, and man, I am fed up. Who isn't? I guess. Your soldiers aren't. They just sit here listening and looking at one another like a lamb looks at a new gate. Well, if you're so tough, why don't you go out there and fight him yourself? That's just <laughs> what I'm planning to do. What? I said that's what I plan to do. I heard you what you said. You're crazy. That um that man is, uh, well, a giant. He's huge. He can knock you over with his little finger. His breath is bad enough to kill a man. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I can do it with God's help. This giant is a dwarf. <laughs> I'm with my sheep. I can spin a rock and send it flying through the air. I'm not fearful with his brow, and I am not afraid of his claw. I have slugged animals with a stick. I locked them in the jaw. And if he thinks some nine-foot boy's gonna scare me more than that, he hasn't seen my slingshot. He hasn't seen my bite. I may still be a kid, but I, I'm may be rather small, but God is strong and mighty, and God is Lord of all. You think you could defeat this giant? With God's help, I have no doubt. Yeah. Well, son, you stay right here. Let me get you some armor. Armor? Now, son, here's the breastplate. What? 
Stop, stop, stop real quick. Give Goliath the shield. He's got the sword already. Can you read it? This is, this is a joke, isn't it? You Israelis are so funny. I asked you to bring a warrior for me to kill, and you send a child? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> have a sword, just a little slingshot. Probably got it for his birthday. Go home to your mommy, boy. <laughs> you, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come with the power of, of God. This The battle is the Lord's. Oh boy, I'm really scared. Those are some really good words, kid. Hang on. <laughs> Wait, I lost it. Again. You shoot him and hit Good him in shot. the head. Good shot, boy. But it's going to take more than... Where did all those stars come from? I think... I think I'm... I'm gone. Hang on. <laughs> and so David defeated Goliath, and the people cheered the boy. The Philistines ran in fear. God's people had victory and joy. So if you were feeling small, too young to serve your, our heavenly king, remember a boy named David who fought and caused Israel to dance and sing. He's dead. All right. Yay. Let's give him a hand, everybody. Yay. Yay. All right. You can have your seats now. Sad. I never you me and you. You to keep that No. All right. who listened to the story. What did you learn, Grace? That you should always trust in God. Yeah. Uh, With God's help, God's help, you can win anything. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, if you put your mind to it. Yeah, put your mind to it. With God's help, you can win, you can quit. Anything's possible. No. Everything. Is that what you learned, or is that what you just learned how to say? Did you get that from this story? What was what was what was, what, what was the position of Goliath? What was he? The giant. Goliath. Giant. How tall was he? 
You're talking about Robert. He was <laughs> nine feet. Okay. He was over nine feet. He was much bigger than the other guy who we thought was the biggest and tallest man in the world. But he was probably a lot bigger because he was, you know, he was, he was he was threatening the whole team of Israel or the whole. Yes. I don't know how big his muscles was, but he had to be big enough to make everyone scared of him. So my point is, okay, I won't get to my point because I need to, for you to tell me something. Yes, Sydney. Um, well, what I took away was even though David, even though David was small, he still had courage enough to do big, big, go, yeah. Even though he was small, he still had courage enough to defeat the big <laughs> yeah. Goliath. Yeah. Why? Yeah, but how did he know that he could defeat the big old Goliath? Yes, uh, Lord. Because he believed in himself and he knew that he, if he believed in himself, he could defeat it. That's part of it, but um, I'm looking for another answer. <laughs> I know. Uh, how would you know? How would you know that God was going to get you through whatever it is you're facing? How would you know? Luca. Speak so I can hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm just giving the point of the story. Okay. Okay, she gave this, the, the point of the story, as she called it. Always have self-esteem because God is bigger than you. What? God, I said God is always with you. God is always with you no matter how big or small you are. Yeah, Moses. I was going to say, with man, something's impossible, but with God, anything is always Okay, but how would you know that? I, I, we're, we're spouting out something we learned because somebody told us. How, you, how, how would you know? Because, see, when we're facing some very hard, insurmountable things, sometimes we crumble. We don't seem to, 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 to hold on to that that we know or we're professing to know. So how would you know that something works? If you... If, if you Say, uh, okay, if you're playing baseball and you want to hit, you want to hit, how would you know that when you swung, you can hit that ball? How would you know? Lord? Concentration. Concentration. Because you've done it before. Because you've done it before. Thank you, Miss Kylie. That's what I'm really looking for. We need to get to the point where we have some experiences with that God, rather than just what somebody's told us or what we read or what we know. Because you can't trust that. But when you've gone through something and you've forced through it and made your way through it, you can trust that because you have that experience. That's why we have examples of games while we play, while we're, we're, we're being honed, and we're, we're, when, you, when you're taking piano lessons, uh, Miss Deary, you taking piano lessons, you have to practice, you have to go over it. Because you gotta train your muscles, your motor skills, your, 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 your mentality, you gotta train your, your, your nerve endings, the, the responses, to know. So, 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 when it comes time, it comes down to knowing that God will get you through whatever it is that you have to go through. How do you do that? When it comes down, I thought so. When it comes down to, and see, that's part of my, my, my issue. It's the focus and it's the paying attention because you're going to need that. A time is going to come when you're not going to have time to say, okay, what was that? Because arrows will be shooting at your head. You know what I mean? Or something will be coming at you. You won't have time to stop and, what am I going to do? You're going to need that focus. You're going to need that understanding. You're going to need that awareness that this is going to work. I don't have time to try to figure out what to do. I have to have confidence in my decision right now. 
and that God is faithful. So what I'm really saying is we need to, to begin to practice understanding the faithfulness of God, but you have to be obedient to do that. In order to understand that God is faithful, you cannot be so full of yourself that all you think about is yourself. Cannot be, because we're not trying him. We're not really letting him have his way in our lives. And I'm talking about there's a big giant among us right now that's trying to di divide and destroy us, trying to intimidate us, mm -hmm. trying to make us turn against one another. And it's a giant because it's, it's something that we really don't see that's insurmountable, but we see what it's doing to us. Part of that giant is lack of focus. Part of that giant is a willful disobedience. Part of that giant is individuality and personalities that just feel like they can do what they want to do. Isn't that what the giant did to, to the Israelites? Yeah. I can do what I want to do. Ain't nobody going to come against me. Come on, send somebody. Try your luck. What you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? You ain't got nothing against me. <laughs> but see, it's that authority. You did what I said because you know that there's authority. You know, and my point is, is that there's something in here trying to take over us, to tear us apart so that we will walk away from here, from this camp, not having really learned anything but how to spout off stuff, but how to recite stuff. My point is, why you get up? Did you ask? No. That's part of the giant. You know? Because we think we cannot overcome that, but we can. It's not so important that you just get up and disrespect the message that's really being spoken to you. It's not so important that you just have to do what you want to do when God is really working on getting the message through to you that you can be whatever you need to be. You can harness the problems and, and the power that you have running through you. You can face the devils that are coming against you, speaking stuff into your mind when you don't know what's going on or who's speaking to you. But those are what those are. Those are giants that you think are insurmountable because I can't explain them to anybody. Because I can't go forth and, 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 and put my hands on them. And even if I could, it would probably knock me down. But I'm saying, when we say Christ alone makes people one, that means we can be one. So we don't have to let that devil of dissension come between us. That devil of you know, personality quirks and all that other kind of stuff. We don't have to let that come between us. But as I was saying to you earlier, if you're building a fire, what do you, what do you gotta do? Put wood in it. If you don't put any wood in the fire, okay. what'll happen? That burning that burning that burning that burning that burning Even if it's burning, if you don't feed that fire, what's gonna happen? It's gonna, it's gonna burn out. out. It's gonna die. It's gonna go out. So my point to you is when you feel that fire bro brewing up inside of you because of things that somebody's trying to feed it or somebody's trying to blow on the fire, you know, somebody's trying to, to ignite something within you, that's that giant that's trying to destroy you, trying to knock you down from your position that you have already achieved in this place because people have begun to watch you and respect you, to love you and all that kind of other stuff. He's trying to stop it. He's trying to stop it. It's a giant that we don't see because he's too big for us to realize. But I'm here to tell you that's what's going on. So make it up in your mind that with God all things are what? Possible. And I can do how many things through Christ? Everything. Who does what to me? Jesus. Jesus. Gives you the ability. Strength. Power. So, 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 so. My point is, we need to let that God be that God in our lives, don't we? Mm -hmm. We don't need to get out to the point where we get tested and then we don't know what to do. We need to right now, 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 right now. Right now, right now. Make the decision that this is what we're going to do. 
Because if you don't arm yourself with that decision being made when you're faced with the circumstance, you're not going to do it. You're going to be caught off guard, and I don't know what to do. I'm just going to respond to the circumstance. And usually when you respond to the circumstance off the top of your wits, it's going to be just that, off the top of your wits. Without wisdom, without understanding, without trusting, without believing, without care, without love, it'll be through strife and vainglory, and those things are not to be. But you've got to harness your concentration. You've got to harness your energy and put that energy into focusing. Put that energy into being obedient. Put that energy into paying attention to your leaders. Put that energy into doing what you know you should do to make the whole thing work. Because you and your response and your reaction is going to be bad for everybody because Christ alone makes all people one. one. So if you do something that's out of sorts, guess who you just affect? Everyone. Everyone. Because Christ makes everyone. Everyone. Isn't the name of this camp one? Yes. So even while we're here, we're being one. I'm looking at that giant. I'm letting him know I know who you are, where you are, and what you're doing. And I'm not going to have it. I'm just not going to have it. I'm not looking at a person because it ain't about people. And I need for you guys to know that, too. When you see that giant starting to rise up, don't go after the person. Don't go after the person he's using, because he's using you at the same time. He's using you and your self-righteous thinking, I'm doing what's right, because i got to go after so-and-so and so. But you didn't really understand that that same person is an image of God, that God made the way he wanted them to be. So when you love them, or when you ignore what they're doing, you're putting out the fire. When you love them and you ignore what they're doing, you're doing what? Putting out the fire. When you love them and you you are putting out the fire. So I am going to put out the fire by loving them and burning them. What they're doing. <laughs> ignoring what they're doing. Because see, if I love you, I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to, I'm not going to feed that. Yeah, Abraham. <laughs> Have you been listening to the whole thing? Yes. What did you learn? <laughs> Stop. Stop it. See, you just proved to me that the whole time you've been thinking about what you want to do instead of really getting the, the message. Because it was really for you. And it was for all of us in here. So, so would you just stand with me, everybody here? Stand with me. You have to stay out too. If you come up here with me. Come up. I'll make you a leader. Come up. Come up. Come up, buddy. Come up. Come on. I'm gonna make you a leader. I'm gonna make you a leader. You're gonna lead people. Okay? All these people are gonna be looking at you.
Father. Oh, God. No, you don't have to repeat it. After this. <laughs> Gracious Father, wonderful Father, holy Father, large Father, magnificent God. This is his time. Okay, God. My God, our Father, our Redeemer, our Lover, the Lover of our soul, the, the, the Provider for all of our victuals, of all of our life, the very life, the source of life to all of us. We salute you. We bow down before you. We lift your name up high and not our own. We ask that you would have your will to be done. And we know that you know more about all of us than all of us could ever know. So I'm not going to ask anything else except your will. Your will be done. You heard our confessions of our desires, what we need to be. Now we're going to trust you to be God because you know how to do that better than all of us. You are our shepherd. There is no lack in you. There's nothing that we will be lacking when we trust you and be still and know that you are God. So have your way within us. Oh, yes, I'm asking. <laughs> have your way within us to... To, to work in us, to will and to do of your pleasure, your good pleasure. We know you are effective. There is no defeat. There's no deceit in you, and we're complete in you. We stand and we pray in the name of Jesus. We're seated at the right hand of God the Father in that name of Yeshua. We're seated at the right hand, which is the hand of your will. We're sitting right by your will at that position where we're subservient to your will. Teach us what that's about, that we would not break that, and that we would let your will be done. And our determination 